It's great to be in the midst of so many feminists. Um, it's great to have executive directors staying for the panel, uh, my colleagues, Femnet, and, and all the feminist groups. Um, you know, I can go ahead and, and talk about what NALAFEM does from supporting 20 young politicians uh, in a fellowship from 13 African countries to being part of the feminist accountability framework with my colleagues. Uh, uh, filling the gap of indicators uh, to certifying 20,000 young women on financial literacy to convening NALFM Summit every year on Jeff anniversary to accelerate member states commitment to subgranting thousands of dollars to young feminists on grassroots but I feel um, and we're actually a small venture. We literally started on 1st July 2021 on Jeff Forum in Paris. Um, but I feel like we need to move the conversation a bit further than and the impact of young feminist commitment makers to express a frustration. A frustration that whenever we collectively come together with institutions, with member states, whenever women and youth groups uh, join hands with global leaders, uh, we're always left halfway. And we're always asked more than we get, far, far much than we get. We've been asked to mobilize for Jeff, we did, we, we did the manifesto, we've been asked to lobby member states, we got eight of the demands into action coalitions, then we're asked to make commitment and then deliver the commitment, and then we're asked to report the commitment in a very also problematic way of reporting, and then we're asked to fill a survey to improve the, the report of the commitment, so. Um, so, you know, the question is, after three years, what did we get as feminist movements? We, we, we trusted this process. We put and poured our investment into it. Where is the accountability for women's economic justice? That's the question. It seems to me like we spent the three years talking about accountability, but not holding the major commitment makers accountable. We're going after feminist organizations who have an annual budget of 50K, 100K, but the big millions, millions and millions of dollars by governments and foundations, we're not hearing about where, where that money is going. There are 528 commitments made by governments. What did we get? Very little transparency on how these 47 billion are spent. Majority we heard from the report on economic justice. 51%, and this is the report of last year, 51% of reported financial commitment that aim to invest. These are a commitment that said we will invest 51% in civil society, in youth-led, in adolescent girls-led movements. Reports, no financial reporting. Basically, do, do not disclose their financial reporting. So we get very little transparency. We get very little access, actually, to commitment makers. We go to commitment makers and we tell them, you pledged. What do we get? Uh, you know, foundations, many foundations would say, you know, we are in the middle of restructuring right now. Come in the next six months. We're in the middle of developing our strategy. Come next year. Uh, go to, talk to Africa office. The, the, the HQ is not part of this portfolio. We, we ask for bilateral with these foundations, CSW. We're very busy right now. Let's do a call in a few weeks. And this shows you the priority. As a foundation, if you look at your schedule in CSW and see how many are you meeting young feminists and how many are you meeting other stakeholders? It does show your priorities. I'm curious about Ford Foundation commitment to 159 million in centering women and girls in GBV. How much of that went into young feminists? So if commitment makers don't have the guts to pour money and shift power into the hands of women and girls, why did you make the commitment in the first place? And then this high-level multilateral process, when it trickles down to member states, what do we get? We get what's happening in the Gambia right now. After 10 years of FTM ban, in 18th of March, there is a risk of repeal. In the Women Month, there is a risk of repeal of such an achievement. What, what do we get from the UN and from action coalitions? We're concerned. What do we do with concerned? Jeff, <laughs> do
JEF, which has an action coalition on GBV, an action coalition on economic justice, both very much interlinked, because when girls through, go through FGM, they're more likely to go through child marriage. When they go through child marriage, they're more likely to drop out of school. When they drop out of school, they're more likely to be trapped in poverty and, and dependent on their abusers at the age of 16. So these action coalitions, your role is not to collect reports, it's to speak out and hold governments accountable. So quickly, I know I have one minute, but quickly, there are three challenges. There are really great reports out there from Purposeful, from Black Feminist Fund that are talking about this. I want to mention just three uh, for this platform. One, financing feminist organization, why there is a lack of financing? Because there is competition. So stop competing and gatekeeping the money supposed to go to girls-led initiatives, and you pour it into your own funding pot. Two, gender funding need to focus on building power. A lot of the UN and foundations want to see legislative wins uh, and policy shifts, but you need to build power within. It's, it, there is a difference between winning and building. You need to, to fund a project called Figure Things Out. <laughs> we need time to figure things out. There is no, no, no project, no event, no convening. Just fund the movement to build healthy movements to protect communities, to you really empower themselves. And so you need to ask yourself as a stakeholder, are you funding young feminist movement as an end to in themselves or as a means to an end? The, the last um, funding challenge, I would say, is funding, gender funding needs to be brave. Every time there is a crisis in a country, and especially in the African continent, we cut budget funds and we pull out the funding. In a crisis time, this is when gender funding need to double down. This is when we, this is when we, this is when we roll up our sleeves and get in the grassroots to do the work. And then you are pulling out funding in the most time that we need you. So essentially, the frustration I'm trying to share and I'm, I'm wrapping up is, Jeff is an ambitious, great visionary project. And we came into Jeff and we trusted the process as young feminist movement because it said it's going to shift power into young feminist and youth-led movements and organizations. But Jeff failed to make that happen, and we have to be honest about it. Now, to move with the only two years we have left, we need an honest conversation with action coalitions, with multi-stakeholder group, with the UN, with all involved to say, just do one achievement. Where is the money for young feminists? And let's move and shift the power to young feminist movement and girls-led initiatives. Ms. Chebby, thank you very much for those remarks and a reality check to the challenges that we're still facing on the movement. And of course, we're going to be hearing a little bit more about the funding issues as well with our next speaker, Ms. Monica Aleman, who serves as International Program Director for Gender, Racial and Ethnic Justice International at Ford Foundation. And we know that uh, you have also committed to forming the Care for All with Respect and Equity or Care Fund. And that's a multi-year investment to build comprehensive care infrastructure. So if you could give us an update on those commitments financing and other initiatives as well. Thank you very much and it is a pleasure to be here uh, with all of you. I have to say sitting next to Aya I can feel the energy and it makes my heart uh, palpitate. Um, but, but I think that that is the right thing. I think that I should be feeling what I am feeling um, because we are in this to make a difference. And if we are not making a difference, we should be hearing about it. We at the Ford Foundation are one of those institutions that did make a pledge. We are one of those institutions that is trying to go from our words into our actions. We understand and know and are conscious and come to work every day knowing that we are not perfect, but we are certainly trying to make a, a difference. How are we trying to make a difference? We understand that financing vehicles are fundamental, but they are multifaceted. Every day, we are continuing to, to make financial decisions that we hope can make that difference. 
in the last five years, we have allocated around $2 billion to building institutions and network, providing the resources that you were referring to, Aya, those that are general support, multi-year, core, going directly to civil society organizations so that we have a strong, robust infrastructure of civil society organizations.